an opportunity to do a jolt. So I'm really excited about that. But I'm a little bit fuddled up because my jolt is actually about the conversation we were just having. It's about what we do to stop ourselves from putting our content out there. Now, I came up with the title of the, the currency of relevance because I wanted to use the play on words. The play on words being one of the definitions of relevance is something that's not out of date, something that's current. So I wanted to use that play on words to talk about the currency that people give you to consume your content. And sometimes that currency is money. Sometimes that currency is their time. But there's a reason why they give you that currency. My background is in psychology. I hang around with narrative psychologists and social psychologists, so we can be anally retentive. And one of the things that we study is something called the presumption of optimal relevance. Okay? That, that sounds really interesting, doesn't it? It's presumption of <laughs> optimal relevance. And this is a reason why we can communicate with each other. Now, this presumption is not about the sort of hardcore coding and decoding about communication. It's about the pragmatics. It's about the sort of nuances of communication. And it has two major tenets. The first being that the reason why I can communicate with you is because I find something is relevant to me. So of the hundreds and hundreds of things I could say in this moment, something has reached its threshold in my psychology. Something has reached its peak in my brain, so therefore I can speak it. And because I'm doing that, you're going to give me a little bit of attention until you figure out whether or not what I'm saying is something important to you or not. So you're going to give of your time to listen to what I have to say until it's no longer relevant to you. In other words, we communicate with each other because of the presumption of optimal relevance. Right? So this is because we're communicating with each other, what we're saying is relevant. And in order to communicate with each other, it's relevant. So there's this presumption. Now, what does that actually mean? Not a lot, but you know, it helps me to do my jolt. What it means <laughs> is this, is that when, as communicators, we have a nasty habit of second guessing ourselves. Right? We think, as we were talking about, is what I have to say relevant? Do I have anything to say? So we limit ourselves. We edit what we have to say. We judge ourselves. And we don't say something that could be important, could be relevant to somebody else. And I'm going to tell you a little story. I was doing a live presentation here. I, I have been putting out audio for about 40 years. About a thousand or so sound clips have gone out. And I often get emails from people. You know, I put something together, I think, geez, that's shit. And I put it out. And somebody emails me going, wow, that was really powerful. Thank you so much. And I go, cool, neat. So that's great. But I, something happened at a live presentation recently. And it really encapsulated this for me. I was doing a presentation on how to live a balanced life. OK, we all know how to do that, right? Particularly those guys who were, yeah, out last <laughs> night drinking a lot. You're very balanced today, right? Um, anyway, so I'm talking about how to live a balanced life. And for some reason, I went off on a little tangent. I just went off. I had had these thoughts in my head that reached a threshold for me, and I spoke them. And I came, somebody came up to me afterwards, and she said, great presentation, but the only thing that really mattered to me was the two minutes that you went off and spoke about that thing that you were talking about. Because my mother died last month, and I have been so stuck in what I was doing that I haven't been able to, I haven't been able to move anything forward. But in your little, what you said, that's helped me to move forward. Now, isn't that really interesting? That something that I hadn't scripted, something that I hadn't planned on talking about, it reached a threshold for me and I went off and I said it. She heard it, she found meaning for it, and mapped it onto her life. And that made a difference for her. So when we sort of limit ourselves, we're limiting the opportunity for someone to find meaning in something we have to say. And that's really a disservice as a communicator, in my view. As a, as a speaker, as someone who creates audio, I often go on tangents. For anybody who's ever heard me speak, they know that. And I don't second guess it anymore. I used to. Like I say, when I put out my audios, I think, oh, geez, why am I doing this? It's not got a point to it. It's only entertainment for me. It's that masturbation thing. Yay, ha, whatever. 
And then I put it out there, and I find that it's made some sort of impact. For me, you know, as, as a communicator, I don't spend quite so much time. Actually, that's a lie. Can anybody tell how nervous I am right now? Because I am petrified. Because I have been spending a whole lot of time wondering what I was going to say to all of these very experienced podcasters was going to make a difference. If I had anything relevant to say. And I've been making myself crazy. Right? Now, and for anybody who public speaks, they know that, you know, there's a lot of people who get up on stage and they kind of go, I really don't want to be here. I mean, I'm very honored to be here, absolutely. But I'm actually manifesting the fear that anybody in this room has got if you're holding yourself back from creating content. I'm manifesting it right now. So what I'm going to say to you is this. It's the same thing. My husband was laughing last night, actually. He goes, do you know you're doing what you're telling them not to do? You know, you're doing it, Nancy. But you're right, honey. Oh, well. You know, so I'm going to get up there tomorrow and tell them I'm manifesting. So, another word that begins with M, but we can talk about that. I don't think you want to see me doing that. So, God, did I just say that? I can't So, my question to you is this How are you limiting the currency of relevance? How are you stopping yourself from doing what you know to do simply because you're worried? about whether or not you're going to be relevant. How are you stopping yourself? Thank you. <laughs>